I've got a C-Series John Deere cart that I'm excited to see. It's in the building and we'll, we'll go take a look at that. We are at the C500T cart. The C stands for cart. The 500 is the bushels. T is trailing, trailing behind the drill. This one has really nice auger here that also includes the auger mover. So that's hydraulically controlled. Looks like a parallel link so it stays level in its range of movement. It's got the feeder that's built in. Looks like it comes part of it. They're calling the drives the Accurate. It's electric drives, big electric motors. And what's interesting is the meter rollers are flexible. They're like a real soft urethane, which I think is pretty neat if something gets in there and would normally cut the hard urethane. This would maybe flex and allow it to pass through and not destroy the roller. This one also has tank scales. So all the C-Series carts now come with tank scales from the factory. If you don't have a C-Series cart, Guess what, it doesn't have tank scales, but you can get them from us at Red E. We can add that to your cart and you can get that without needing to buy a new one. What else is different that I've seen? What's really cool is they've actually converted a lot of it to stainless. If instead of steel, they've got stainless in here. But there's also a lot of plastic because that's not gonna corrode. Hopefully it doesn't get fertilizer trapped into crevices and swell and cause gaps or leaking there. For cost and getting features built into the plastic, that's a good way to go. The pipes, it's black steel. Just kidding, it's not black steel. This is poly, it's like a plastic pipe, HDPE maybe. This plastic pipe can wear really well, so it's gonna last a long time. I'm guessing friction is, is pretty minuscule too. But check out those motors. Those are some serious electric motors. They're gonna turn those meters. Guys have mentioned these look really complicated. There's a lot going on, so as long as it works, it's gonna work good. So I see something interesting here. It looks like they're going from what appears to be a three inch tube, and they're necking it down here to a two and a half maybe, and then the hose, the two and a half hose would slip right over this. Maybe that's an option where if you don't need a three inch hose running all the way to your drill, these can be sufficient. But if you need the three inch, then uh, these are probably different pipes. I'm guessing these are three inch pipes that then connect to the three inch holes all the way. It's a little dark in here, but there's these meter rollers that twist out and they pop right out like this. It's a cartridge, really flexible, urethane, color coded, both the part you screw out in the, on the outside of it and then the inside part. It must be on a set of, of bearings because it appears this moves. I can r rotate this on the part that I'm holding. I'm only seeing eight runs on this. Unlike some of the other machines, they've been nine or 10. Uh, this one looks like they, they decided they're, they're good enough with eight. This one's a double shoot. They do have a shut off gate, which seems pretty simple. Um, for, for air pressurization, they've got a valve that you change for top shoot to bottom shoot. Looks like they still maintain a Venturi effect on the manifolds down below. It looks like it necks down and will help draw that product out of the tank. This is kind of cool. They've got what looks like an LED light that shoots across where you would service this. So there's one here. This one would shoot into this area where you pull the meters out. And this one would shoot across into this one. So you can really see in there I think that's pretty neat. This is quite the agitator. Looks like there's an agitator shaft that goes across. This is way heavier than the 1910 agitator. Wonder if that's electric drive as well. Looks like it is. Nice dollies. This one would be set up for duels. Cast aluminum fan. That doesn't look too different. Some pretty cool looking taillight. I'd say that's pretty modern kind of matches their newer tractor look. Here's the clearance signals. I really like the look of that. The tanks look good. A 190 front tank, 90 middle tank, and a 220 rear tank. Look at the size of this case. This thing's huge. Here's your manual. Different color caps in case you have different rollers like a tool. Calibration bag. We should try to see if you can actually 
fit our calibration shoots on this so you don't have the bag. I know a lot of guys don't like the bag. This would help with the shimmying, keep the shimming to a minimum as you're going on the road. What's interesting is I see four batteries up here. There's, there's literally four different batteries that are probably helping to power this system. We've got a hydraulically run alternator that's uh, powering the electric drives. To get up on top, there's these little latches here. Flip that out and we're not gonna clear the door. We're gonna go up the old fashioned way and climb. Probably not how they plan this to go. Huge platform, tons of room. Just clear. Look at down there. That ladder is wider than the 1910s. Let's get down there and see what's inside. Now this would be the 220 bushel compartment. Very spacious. You can see the depression here. The indent for the platform. And then down here, you got some very interesting agitators. Check this out. These look like they're investment cast stainless on that big stainless rod. That's got to be a three quarter rod, whereas the old ones were like half inch. That's a really heavy duty design. I think that's going to do well. I see some silicone here. This isn't going to do a good job. This is going to flake off and fall inside and get stuck somewhere. So some of that might have to get addressed, but there's a rubber seal. A plastic funnel. This plastic funnel, there's a plastic top plate. That's interesting. That's different than it used to be. That's way less than stainless. You can see here they've got a stainless bar or flat strap that's going around with, uh, look at the size of those flanged stainless bolts. Those look custom machined. And that's squeezing it all together and sealing it up. Looks like a good seal. And again, we got stainless steel down in here. That's really good. That means it's not going to corrode. The ladders, we never really saw corrode too much. We didn't have issues with those, and so they'll probably be fine. Yeah, it looks good. And then this is that top plate here that slides back and forth to shut it on and off, or to open it and close it. So that's good to have if you need to check your meters and you want to shut off your product so it can't fall down into your meter area. Yeah, I like this. So far I'm very impressed. It seems to me they put a lot of thought and good design into this system. Wow, look at this air pressurization. This is intense. So they're running this huge hose all the way up to the top of the lid. And they got wires coming up here. Maybe a vacuum line right here. Very interesting. This is a camera harness, so they already got cameras built into the tank. And look at all these lights. There's these LED light strips. That's going to help you see. They're low profile. I like that. It just seems like this is a cart that's got everything it should have. Everything you could possibly want. Cameras, scales, electric drives that gets you turn comp, section control, or stainless where it should be, auger mover, a tank shutoff, and uh, a really wide platform. It's got some pretty cool stuff up here. All right, we're packing up. Thanks guys for watching. See you next time. Make sure you like and subscribe to keep up on all the fresh content posted weekly, which includes helpful tips and tricks, new products, and various adventures. Also, make sure you check out Ready's website to shop our performance air seeder solutions.